This program proudly brought to you by Two E's New. Give that man a new. Harvey Norman, there's a store near you. And the Extreme Nissan X Trail. is coming to you from the Energy Australia Stadium where Newcastle play host to South Sydney. The home side is without the suspended Andrew Johns. Injured amongst others, names like O'Davis, McDougall and Simpson. But they do welcome back lock forward Ben Kennedy and front rower Josh Perry. The coach is Michael Hagan. The visitors have made wholesale positional changes to the side beaten last start. Nine in all with Chris Walker into the centres, a new halves combination of Craigie and Carney with captain Brian Fletcher moving into the front row. Their coach is Paul Langmack. The Newcastle Knights won the toss. They will run from right to left on your screen for the opening 40 minutes with the assistance of what has been a, a swirling breeze over the best part of the last half hour. Your referee, Steve Lyons. It is his 17th first grade appointment since debuting in 2001. We're underway in Newcastle, the Knights. Ball in hand, first time as they welcome back Josh Perry from a one-week suspension, eager to get into the play. Likewise, Ben Kennedy. Some second-phase football, Danny Badera skirting out wide. Running into the middle of the field, met by an enthusiastic Bunnies line. Their captain Parsons, a mountain of a man. Is brought down nicely by his opposing number. And of course, Paul Stringer quickly to Gidley. A beautiful little ball out the left. Anthony Quinn down the sideline. There's bunnies everywhere in defence. Some good metres for the, the home side in this opening set. They look to the extreme. Tahu, a beautiful ball off to Craig Hall. It is a foot race, and Hall is going to win it. Or is he? Daniel Abraham playing the supporting role to perfection. And after 60 seconds, the Knights are on the board. And Andy, that's a horror start for the South Sydney side. They played quite well last week despite going down. But last week they had their weaknesses on their left side defence. We hope they might have plugged them up today, but they made a break down the left side. Then they spread it wide to the right hand side. Great tap over there by Tahu. And this man, Craig Hall, he's a speed machine, does well. In fact, a good attempt to tackle there by Wade McKenna, but the support play on the inside was too good. But the Knights, they're going to go wide at every opportunity. They made a bust on the left-hand side, then spread it back to this, head, this side of the field. And Craig Hall, he knows how to get across the line. He scored a hat trick only a few weeks ago. Gets the ball back on the inside, and what a tremendous try there. Great support play by Daniel Abraham. And in fact, it will be Abraham to take the shot from goal from wide angle. It is a club high on wing talent over the last couple of years. Names like McDougal and Tahu. Adam McDougal, one of many. Slated to make a return to rugby league in the next four weeks. Abraham strikes it. And nicely. That's enough to put a smile on the second rower's face and the Knights lead six points to nil in just the third minute. Another difficult day at the office for South Sydney coach Paul Lanak in only his ninth game as an NRL coach. And Andy, we should point out too that the Knights have got a very stiff breeze behind their backs in this first half, so they've got the benefit of a big breeze. Real important for the, for the Rabbitohs to put that set back behind them and focus on shutting down the offloads. It's the offloads from the Knights forwards that are going to cruel the South Sydney side if they want to try and win this match. Parsons tackled just his side of halfway. That is tackle number three, Baderas. A sloppy kick. Wade McKinnon, the former Parramatta junior. A Sinclair junior. Look to open up the Knights. 
was taken by the try scorer that time, Craig Hall. Wise Catavavara making his South Sydney debut was released by the Dragons only a couple of weeks ago as Fletcher, the captain, offloads a nice little right-handed ball. Jamie Russo playing the supporting role. Ashley Harrison. That is tackle number three. Dominating the ruck on that occasion, the second row, Walker. The Bunnies making very easy metres in this set of six. They haven't been piggybacked downfield in any way, shape or form. Russo, a big left boot. Now the pressure is on Hall. When I said big left boot, we meant every bit of it far too big for the lock forwards. And that gives you an indication of the strength of this breeze. It was an attempted crossfield kick there by Russo, but it just went, the, the breeze got it, and it was just dragged way over the sideline. You've got to watch those high kicks, but at the same time, Andy, they're going to be hard to take for the fullbacks and wingers. Matthew Jobson, the South Newcastle junior for a side. So good as far as their kicking game goes. It's interesting to note Newcastle haven't kicked a 40-20 since round 20, 2001. Kennedy! He's had an impact since coming on. An easy possession changeover, and Chris Walker has split them in his tackle. By the captain, Matty Parsons. A good tackle from the big front rower. Certainly outpaced Craigie. A hint of a shepherd in the middle of the ruck is taken nicely around the laces. Abraham over the top, Parsons. A second opportunity for the Bunnies. Beautiful ball to Fletcher. He in turn finds McKinnon. We're going to be square here at Energy Australia Stadium. What a way to strike back there by the Rabbitohs. They, they bounced off what Chris Walker did, and that was a tremendous broken field run. Got the ball up near the, near the try line, and then it was just real slack defence by the Newcastle Knights on the edge of the ruck. Fletcher knows how to hit a hole, and McKinnon knows how to support. But it was the Knights' defence on the edge of the ruck that were, they weren't numbering off. They were going up without communicating, and Fletcher came back into the hole. McKinnon was on the spot. Great trip, great try, great way to bounce back. Certainly is, and Wade McKinnon has been in a battle royale for the fullback position so far in 2003. Chris Walker has been used there, Nathan Merritt has been used, Brad Watts is an option. And that's certainly going to impress his coach playing the supporting role to his captain, Brian Fletcher, who early on seems to be enjoying the transition into the front row. Justin Smith kicking at 70% for season 2003. We'll have no problems with this. And it is six points all between the Newcastle Knights and the South Sydney Rabbits. Slowly putting a smile on the face of their coach. Also interesting to note the two coaches here today, Michael Hagen and Paul Langmack former teammates with Canterbury and enjoyed two winning grand finals together in 1984 and 1985. As far as coaches go, it has been a very different ride for each. Stringer. Grabbing sideways a little, trying to move to the left-hand side of the ruck. He does just that. Catavarata. Will be extremely keen to impress his new club, given the opportunity mid-season. Fletcher, taken by Perry, a three-man tackle from the Knights. No dominance in the ruck from either side as yet. Quigley and Parsons, the captain's numbers have been inspirational today. A high ball, Mark Hughes. The versatile Mark Hughes. One, do it. Almost beat oh, Shane Walker, Owen oh. Craigie with the assist. Ball. That is tackle number two. Okay. Tahu looking to milk an offside penalty. Oh, Referee lines right. wouldn't fall for it. Quickly again. Wrestled oh. to the ground by the much smaller Brett Carney. Up, Abraham. One out football from the Newcastle Knights. This is the fifth and final tackle. They look to Baderas. And up she goes. 
Will the breeze pay, play a part? It doesn't. And nicely taken by Wade McKinnon. And Andy, that's where we see the value of Andrew Johns. I mean, Andrew Johns has got tremendous value in a whole range of areas. But to the Newcastle Knights, he has, has got a tremendous kicking game. He's got the best kicking game in the competition. It's a long kicking game. It manages to, to, to uh, pick up lots of easy yardage. And in the first two kicks that we've seen from the Newcastle side, there's been no pressure put on South with their kicking game at all. Russo, a jink and a step, he is met by the Knights line. 30 metres out, this is their last tackle. Walker, Carney the halfback on the left-hand side, and up she goes. Plenty of pressure on Mark Hughes, Owen Craigie. With a beautiful tackle and almost escorts the fullback into the front row of the stand. And it was perfect placement there by the kick as well because the ball came down a metre out from the, the, the try line. Owen Craigie was on the spot, the force, a line drop out, and it's a tremendous attacking opportunity for the Rabbitohs. I'll call you back, come back, you don't. I'll ping his last tackle. All right? Don't ignore me. Owen Craigie has had an indifferent well, season today, respond, playing mate, out in the centres, shuffled into the number six jersey just to try and... Uh, and use a, use a different option on one side of the ruck. Russo will be on oh, one side, Carney split. skirting oh. and Craigie on the other. Fletcher, taken nicely by Quigley. Two, Marcus, hands off! Last time oh, these two teams met, Newcastle convincing winners. That was round 16 last year. Three, three. It is six Go all. Back, the Bunnies 10 metres out, this is the third. Russo, nice short ball, oh. finds Harrison. Carney. The support was out wide, but too wide to be able to utilise. There's Craigie. A nice little tip to Craig Hall. Up and over Hall it goes. Catamarana on debut for the Bunnies collects the points. What a great kick there from Owen Craigie, and he, it looked like there was nothing doing. Craigie shaped the pass. He was going to run the ball on the last tackle, and then he saw the Newcastle Knights rushing up out of the defensive line. What he did was he rolled it off his ankles so that it, it, it bounced awkwardly, as we see here. He looked like a pass and rolled it off his ankles. The ball bounced awkwardly. The shape of a rugby league ball you can never predict bounced awkwardly, and a fantastic chase there by Catamarada. A few it's of the Newcastle Knights questioning the put down, and this angle will give us a pretty clear indication. Well, not the clearest indication there. Maybe we get a bit better view on this occasion. But it was a great kick by Craig. He rolled it off the inside of his ankle. Catavarada, that's nothing wrong with that put down at all. So it was it was a great chase, great attacking kick by by Owen Craigie. Justin Smith would dearly love to kick the Bunny's second goal of the afternoon, and in his form has been good. Coming around, coming around, and over. The Bunnies, sitting at the bottom of the NRL ladder, lead a team at many tip will be there on that first weekend of October by 12 points to six. Just scraping in, a lovely kick allowing for the win. Justin Smith's a kicker that's got decent length about his right leg and uh, you could see the effect the wind had on that ball. Stringer. Breaking the first tackle, Whoa, taken by Kennedy. Off, ben, stay up. Hold it. Square. Steve Lane, our referee, you can hear in the background, very, very vocal as Fletcher is slammed to the ground by Matt Parsons. They look to the right, Harrison. Three, short right and roll. Hold. Tackle number three. They go to Craigie on the left-hand side. Matthew Jobson aware of his antics. Still easy metres. The jury. Five, thank you, one 21, one, one, just a couple of weeks to go. Oh, this hold, is the hold. final tackle. And into a stiff breeze, it is a long way to the other end of the ground. Jamie Russo puts the left boot to it. And Mark Hughes with plenty of room to work. One, Not the away, kick Justin. chase the Bunnies would have liked. It wasn't, it wasn't a long kick either into this breeze. But the thing is that this Newcastle Knights outfit doesn't have the int intimidation about them with all their injured players. Uh, on the sidelines at the moment. They're just not intimidating the opposition. The Rabbitohs forwards are ripping into them, taking the ball forward, and the Newcastle Knights defence is very, looking very, very brittle, almost on every set. Tackle number four, Parsons with some second phase footy. Five. Here it is. 
here it is, mate. This is the final option tackle. They will again go to Baderas on the left-hand side. Again an indifferent kick. Bounced poorly for the Newcastle Knights and a very easy restart for South Sydney. And Paul Langmax obviously drilled the Rabbitohs into the fact they need to put pressure on Danny Baderas. He's not a recognised kicker at first receiver. He's done plenty of kicking Hands from dummy off, half Hands over the, the recent years, but oh. with Andrew Johns there, he's got to do some kicking from first receiver, and that's a big difference in, in, in his play, and it's something the Rabbitohs are really pressuring. The best number nine in the industry for mine, Danny Baderas, but by necessity, forced to wear the number seven jersey for the past fortnight. Russo making it up to the halfway line tackle number four two remain shane walker a dart out of dummy half Five. taken by the front row Be of perry and parsons Be this is the last oh. craigie and carney are out on the right it worked last time so they're going to try it again up she goes for mark hughes batted back no it wasn't batted forward he knocked it for you, he rolled over the top and knocked it for not you. Yeah. No, mate. That's Pretty it, frank mate. discussion there Locked between on. referee lines and the Newcastle players. Take it across, Matt. Well, Matty Hughes claims he didn't knock the ball forward, which he didn't. And it didn't look as though Tahu knocked the ball on either, so maybe the Knights had an argument there. Looking to the left-hand side, McKinnon, a nice little dart out of dummy half by Chris Walker. Dummy half, should I say, locked forward. To the left again they go. This time through Smith. Some fabulous attacking opportunities in the early minutes of this game. Brian Fletcher has been busy, the captain. Four metres out. Walker, an inside ball to Stringer. Trying to barge their way through the middle of the Newcastle line. Walker to the halfback Carney. A wide ball to Craigie. Chris Walker. Back to Owen Craigie. There is open space. The 5'8. Caught just short. This is the final tackle. Harrison, nicely read by Mark Hughes at the back. 10 metres, about four years off. Well, Andy, it looked like Wade McKinnon was definitely in front of the kicker there. I think the referee got it spot on there. Look, he's about a metre and a half offside. But the Rabbitohs are starting off superbly. They, well, they didn't start off superbly. They conceded a, a try in the first minute. But since then, they've regrouped. They're playing Number with 10. confidence. They're throwing the football around. And most importantly, their defence is intimidating Newcastle at their own game. It's not normally the other way around when you come up against the Knights. A strong run from the centre three-quarter to Manatahu, one of many Knights expected to be named in the country origin side for next Friday night's clash. Craig Hall, the Knights only try scorer. Tackled on the second, Baderas. Kennedy, nowhere to go. Back to the right hand side, they find Tahu, his third possession in two hit ups. And stripped. Ah, you ripped it out, mate, I saw it clearly. Not a loose carry. <laughs> It's black or white, there's no grey area. Yeah, a little, uh, little Carney there tried to pop his hand in. Hopefully the referee wouldn't see it, but the referee was in a good he position, picked it up away. straight away. The Knights looking to level at 12. Perry charging and over the line. That is pure strength from the front rower. One-up stuff from the Knights, and it is working to perfection. Well, Andy, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Josh Perry. He just carried five of them over the try line here. Hits the ball up straight into the meat of the South Sydney forwards. One, two, three, four and a half drops off straight over the, the try line. That's soft defence from the Rabbitohs, but at the same time, he just keeps pumping his legs, pumping his legs. What's Carney doing in there? You shouldn't have a halfback defending in the middle of the ruck for a start. It was, but it was a tremendous run. But they just kept coming in. The Rabbitohs in numbers couldn't stop him, and bang down on the try line, on the line to try. Daniel Abraham, from almost an identical position, and slots that one over too. Plenty of points. But these points make the locals happy. 24 in total. 
and Paul Langmack. We saw Nathan Brown down on the sideline several weeks ago, laying down the law to the St George Illawarra Dragons. And Paul Langmack up off the seat. And I think he realises the Bunnies are right in this game. And this could be one that they don't want to let get away. They have done that so far in the opening couple of rounds of 2003. And I'm sure he sent the message out there that they've got to continue to put pressure on the Knights kicking game. And the other thing is to shut down the off waves. Kicking game and the off waves, if they can shut them down, they're every chance of going on with this game. Ben Kennedy invaluable to this Newcastle Knights outfit. That is tackle free. A lot has been said about can the Knights win without Andrew Johns. But it's certainly not just Andrew Johns. Their injured list reads like a who's who as Danny Medeiros takes the quick tap. Now quickly the tempo of a rugby league match can turn. Parsons used as the decoy from Rudder to Kennedy. Jobson, a wide, the wide running second rower out there in support. Quigley again. Rudder. Nice ball to Gidley who in turn finds Quinn and Anthony Quinn is claiming a try. How are you standing? Simple as that, Steve Lyon, not quite sure. He refers it straight up to Mick Stone, the video referee, and it's probably fair to say Mick has got a little bit of pressure on him after Friday night's performance. I'm no doubt Mick Stone will aim up as required, but on this occasion, the, the Newcastle Knights attack down their right-hand side, uh, short side. Don't get much of a view from that angle. Very close to the touchline, if in fact he did get the football down. Let's so bring him back in, mate. we Let's might get a better in. angle. We'll a we don't get, well, we get a view there that it looks like he gets the ball down at some stage, but does he go over the touchline first? That's the question, Mark, whether he gets his body on the touchline before he gets the ball down. This is the angle back again. Oh, it's very close, but you couldn't conclusively say that he was on the line from that angle. So therefore, does the benefit of the doubt go to the attacking side as in the laws of the game? Well, it could be a referee's decision. Steve Lyon, I think, in referring straight up to Mick Stone and in the way he did it, well, you also got... said he didn't have a clue. You've also got the touch judge over there. Well, no, it looks like he... Well, actually, on that view, it looks like he may have lost possession. So... There's probably two queries. Anthony Quinn in limited space. Whether it is four points or not has done pretty well. A junior kangaroo last year and a regular junior representative footballer. And only his third appearance so far this year. So the, what they're looking at here is to see whether or not he had control of the football when it was grounded and it looks mm. like it slipped out so I'd say the big red no try sign is going to come up that's the analysis from Wayne Pierce, Mick Stone sitting in close proximity to us here at Energy Australia Stadium gets the final say and the decision is a try benefit of the doubt all right yeah, that was a big benefit of the doubt to the attacking side. It was good attack down that short side. What it does raise, Andy, it raises the issue of South's left-hand side defence. We saw last week the deficiencies they had on the left-hand side. The Knights have obviously picked up on that, and they've just given the ball out. And, well, let's have a look at that. From that angle, we don't know. The, the other angle, Mick Stone says it was a try, but it was great work. Gidley catch and pass. South caught short for numbers. And Anthony Quinn, well, he comes up with a four-pointer. His second of the season put the assist down to Matthew Gidley. Beautiful, soft and lightning-fast hands from the centre three-quarter on the right-hand side. Daniel Abraham getting all of his practice today at his home ground from very difficult angles. Not this time around for the second rower. Struck it nicely, just struck it left. So the score remains. The Knights up by four over the Bunnies. And Andy, I've got to say, 
you looked at the video, plenty of fans at home looked at the video. If you could have conclusively said that that was a try, I don't have a problem. But if the video ref is not, can't conclusively say that he, A, he wasn't in touch, and B, he didn't lose control of the football before he put it down, he shouldn't make a decision. It should go back to a ref's call. We are going to hear more about the video referee. It seemed the introduction of that technology was to eliminate any benefit of the doubt in try scoring situations but it seems most Mondays the newspapers and television news are dominated by video referee decisions Parsons looking for the offload too many bunnies three of them on the captain Quigley a nice wide ball to Sean Rudder inside the 40 it goes straight down to Wade McKinnon at the back the try scorer from earlier, Kennedy, in an aggressive tackle. No way. Ben, don't answer back, mate. It was a dominant. He was only straight. No. You're not going to win that argument, Benny boy. And then it appears that the, the players still have problems with this dominant tackle. Well, on that occasion, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, he was dead set wrestling the, the player down when he was trying to get up and, and play the football. But the players still week in, week out have got problems with how much time they, or how much leeway they've got in terms of getting off the tackle player. That's Frank Pulitur in the red and green headgear for South Sydney. Their captain, Brian Fletcher, a couple wide of the ruck. Gets the ball back to Ashley Harrison. One on to Lee Hookie, looking for his winger, doesn't need him in fact, and Lee Hookie has found space down the left. And a try. Somehow, the Bunnies have ended up with points. No, they haven't. Out of breath is Lee Hookie. Let me, let me speak. Don't want to tackle, it's fine. I'll give you a bit of time to get off. But not spit on him, do on the turtle. Well, I've got to get back and get off the front, don't I? You don't use him to get up. Well, you can push off him, but not spin around. Just him, out as Lee Hookie as the right, arguing ben, continues on mate, between Ben here. Kennedy and Steve Sorry. Lyons. And the Newcastle Knights oh. let off the hook. They certainly were. I think Ben Kennedy's got to settle. Oh, as they almost got to win against the head there. Ben Kennedy's got to really settle down. He's got... Go! He's got to focus on his own game and not take his frustrations out on the referees. Too good a player for that. He is an emotional player, Ben Kennedy, and fires himself up on such emotion that there is a very fine line between what is acceptable and what's not. As the Knights play an expansive brand of football, Tamana Tahu, a beautiful ball to Craig Hall. They make the best part of 30 metres. Abraham. Came down. And, this, shot. and this has been South Sydney's perhaps biggest fault over the opening eight rounds of the competition, piggybacking teams downfield with ill-disciplined play. Well, it's the, it's the reason fall. that they've scored the, the last two tries has been off the back of piggyback, so they've got to watch themselves here. Andrew Price on one. for the Newcastle oh, Knights. Off. Tackle number one. They lead by four, the home side. Two. Perry out there for an extended period to Rudder inside ball to Kennedy who loses his footing some 15 metres out Quigley to Abraham a one on one with Carney the half back up to it play on says referee line eventually wrestled to the ground by Ashley Harrison to the right with Baderas a long long ball to Tahu he has his winger in support on the inside. He has Mark Hughes. There is a metre in it. Ball at dummy half. Thanks, Stu. You come up here as a blocker, deliberately. And a poor final tackle play for the Newcastle Knights. Well, as we saw there, the decoy came Same through. Daniel wins. Abraham as a decoy Same to try and prevent the defenders blockers. coming off. Andrew Price, it was actually coming hey, off. Blockers, when you're attacking the line near the ruck and everything, that's what he did. Okay. Steve Lyons leaving oh, all there, 26 hold. guys with no doubt exactly who the boss is out there this afternoon, and a physical dominant tackle from the Knights on Frank Pulitua. Fletcher. Hold here, go. 
That's hit up number eight for the captain so far this afternoon. Harrison. Three, hands away. Keep coming. Shane Walker at dummy half. Decides to look for some metres. Solo is met by three Newcastle Knights and driven backwards in the tackle. Harrison to Fletcher again busy. Craigie on the right-hand side. A cutout ball they were looking for Catavarada. All they found was the sideline. And it's the error count that's creeping up from South Sydney that's causing them enormous problems. They've just got to temper their passion to spread the ball wide. It's great. It's fine to do that when you've got the ability to, to, to match your aspirations. But the Rabbitohs have got to get some go forward happening before they start to spread the ball wide. They're right in this football game. And they know it. Medeiros to Rudder. They look to the right-hand side, the Newcastle Knights. Here it is, Dustin, hold! Twelve and a half minutes remaining before the half-time break. Price met in a big tackle from Frank Kulatua. Also in there, Justin Smith. Bullocking run. Matthew Jobson. He's played in every game so far this year for the Knights, but it's Andrew Price. A minute ago, the villain conceding a penalty, now collecting the points. And Andy, what side of the field was it again? It was the South Sydney left-hand side defence that let them down yet again. The Knights are going out there at every opportunity. Great little pass there out to the big fella, Andrew Price. Hits the hole superbly, but there's there appears to be some lack of communication. On this occasion, it was Frank Pulitua that came up out of the line, missed his man, and it was a, a great direct straight run by Andrew Price that just hit a hole. Very simple, but effective. Daniel Abraham, who was, before his last kick, kicking at 100% from his attempts at goal this year. The last two haven't been hit as sweetly, so the advantage remains with the Knights, not as they would have liked, but they do lead by eight after half an hour. Looking at the players that are out of this Newcastle side, it is certainly not just their halfback and captain Andrew Johns, Adam McDougall, Josh Smith, Kurt Gidley, Steve Simpson, Robbie O'Davis, Adam Woolno. They have a very healthy casualty list as Shane Walker gets a well-earned break for the Bunnies. Yeah, they've got a lot of players out and it's going to be a, a tough few period coming up. Next weekend's going to be pretty tough as well because there's the, the City Country game on Friday night. There's going to be a lot of Newcastle players in contention and playing in that match. Then they've got to back up against uh, again next weekend uh, just after that game, so on the Sunday after that game. So it's going to be a tough period this next couple of weeks. Jobson plays the ball on the fourth. Comes one back to the try scorer, Andrew Price. The Knights going with pretty sizable reserve bench in this encounter. Four back rowers. Nice kick downfield is making Catabrata work. And an enthusiastic chasing team led by Ben Kennedy and led by Josh Perry. Perry has been busy for the Newcastle Knights. 11 tackles, eight hit-ups after missing a week of rugby league. Three, Willie Keep Peters is on for the Bunnies, replacing Shane Walker, perhaps look, looking Four, for a little bit of a settling influence and oh. some creativity from around the ruck, some structure. Brian Fletcher. And he's been a pow real powerhouse today. He's, he's scored a try, but he's taken them forward. His work rate in defence has been superb. Maybe he's a born-again front rower. First, first time in the front row. And doing it well as Brian Fletcher, not so for his opposing number and opposing captain Matt Parsons, who we understand has rib cartilage damage and will be assessed at half time. That would be not only a massive blow losing him, but being down to just 16 for the Knights with just on 50 minutes remaining. Tell you what, that was very lucky not to go out on the full right, also. Put Would have put the He's Rabbitohs on the back foot. Willie Peters with his first Balls kick out. of the afternoon. Tahu playing at first receiver from the scrum Why, base. Kennedy straight and hard and good metres from the lock forward. Only his third game for the season. One-on-one -on -one strip 
from Lee Hooky. And that's not going to impress the Knights or the Knights fans. An opportunity to get the gap back. Owen Craigie tried for a miracle ball to Chris Walker. He had a man on the inside unmarked and Walker unable to grasp the opportunity. Well, Andy, haven't said there was a try on there for sure. On the inside, he had Willie Peters unmarked. He elected to go back on the outside. As we can see here, it was great work by Craigie. Footwork, hits the accelerator. He's got walk on the outside, but back on the inside, which we couldn't see just off camera, was Willie Peters unmarked. Would have been in under the post. Abraham putting his hand up and offering his services. 40 metres out, tackle number two, Baderas. Long ball to Rudder. Back to Baderas, a simple run around. They do have numbers, Gidley. Another beautiful ball, back to the number seven. A hint of a forward pass for the Knights, it is play on. Anthony Quinn to Gidley. Baderas screaming for the ball. Awkward angles and a penalty almost right in front of the post. The Knights will play on and Baderas almost untouched collects another. The urgency and the commitment for the Bunnies just wasn't there. Now where they're falling down is they're falling down in the contest in the play of the ball. They're not managing to slow down the play of the ball of the Knights defend, not, not the Knights, as the Knights go forward. And as a result of that, their defenders are backpedaling. Gidley, tremendous offload on the short side, and hit the accelerator again. There goes Anthony Quinn. From the breakdown in play, they spread the ball wide. There was a penalty to the Rabbitohs, and they were too slow to regroup after a penalty. That's schoolboy stuff. You've got to be on your toes. You've got to get set quickly. And Danny Badiris, with all his experience, taps it quickly, goes over for the simplest of tries. An opportunistic four points for the number seven, his fourth of the year. Owen, I saw you back, go behind the line, mate. Steve Lyons in a running battle with Owen, Owen Craigie. Go the line. Fletch, Fletch. And Andy, we've just got to point out, if the players aren't behind, behind the line and, the, and he misses the goal, which he doesn't, he gets an automatic another, another re-kick, so the, the Rabbitohs players, by being in front of the try line are only penalising themselves. And that seems to be the way this game, round number nine of the NRL Telstra Premiership is going. The Bunnies have made several fundamental errors, but a lot of it has come from ill-discipline football. It has cost them points. McKinnon with the restart. And again, it is Josh Perry charging into the Bunnies line. And let's see if the Rabbitohs, they slowed down that play of the ball there. Let's see if they can work on slowing down the play of the ball because that's where they've been getting cut short. Once again, they've slowed that down, so that's great. But they need to do that tackle after tackle after tackle. Or this night side, the, 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 the attacking potential they got out wide is going to carve up the Rabbitohs. Badaris, these two clubs have clashed on 19 occasions and the Knights with a very distinct advantage. 16 victories to South's three. And Wade McKinnon lets the ball head out over. There was a hint that he touched it. And there's Robbie O'Davis looking on. He would dearly love to be out there. But of course suffered that horrific facial injury. And Robbie O not looking too bad on the sideline considering what he did look like three weeks ago. Yeah, it looked terrible. It looked like he would have needed some plastic surgery. But now he's, uh, he's aimed up OK. So hopefully from the Knights' point of view, He'll be back out there. We, we, we understand that he'll be back in four or five weeks' time, which will be a tremendous boost to the, to the Knights. Craigie and Walker again causing problems down the right-hand side. Tahu was flicked off by the 5'8". Now Walker charges infield. Picks up Jamie Russo in the 13 jersey. Running out of support. He won't need them. The lock forward collects. I thought the support had overrun him and then run the wrong way. Jamie Russo put the head down 
and continue to charge to the line. Well, I didn't think he'd have enough uh, enough speed to get there in the end, but great work here by Chris Walker. He's having a good game today. Russo hits it, hits the hole beautifully, looking to, to position his support players back on the inside, but in the end he realises that Mark Hughes didn't have the momentum. He had the speed to get there. But Walker, his involvement today has been first class. He's bounced back for a, a horror period, and Russo, he continues to get better and better. He's been playing 5-8. For the, for, for the early part of the season, he's shifted to lock today and he's carting the ball beautifully into hole. So the Rabbitohs strike back and with only a couple of minutes to go till half time, it was a much needed try. Realistically for Jamie Russo, very little has changed in the way he'll play football. It's just the jersey on his back, the lock forward 5-8 throw that he is playing and that Owen Craig is playing is pretty similar. Justin Smith with the perfect scorecard this afternoon should have few troubles in slotting this over. It wasn't that long ago it looked to be on the verge of a Newcastle Knights romp, but the Bunnies have struck back only minutes before half time to bridge the gap to just eight and to make that man a little happier and perhaps a little more relaxed during his halftime speech. And while Lang, Paul Langmack might be a little bit more, more relaxed at half-time, one man that won't be happy is Michael Hagen because the Knights' defence, given the, the field position they've had for the majority of this game, has been absolutely disgraceful on the edges of the ruck. The Rabbitohs have had less possession, yet they've, they've made uh, an enormous number of busts. Could have come up with another try as well uh, when Lee, Lee Hooky almost scored uh, about 15 minutes ago. So. It's, uh, it's a situation where Michael Hagen's going to have to stiffen up their defence out wide. Cadaverada tackled some heavy body contact between Josh Perry and Frank Pulitur on the opening tackle. Fletcher. And for the captain, that is hit up number 10, also in, well into double figures in his tackle count. They look to the left-hand side. There was an overlap. They still might be able to exploit that. Ashley Harrison, a sloppy play ball picked up by Ahmed Majuri. Play on, says the referee. Majuri comes back across field, looking to link up with some support. He does just that into Owen Craigie. A basketball type ball to Justin Smith. Back to Brian Fletcher. Chris Walker, a forward ball in the middle of it. Fletcher there, forward. He's in line with it. Expansive footy from the Bunnies. And yes, it certainly was forward back to Chris Walker on the inside. Pack it, boys. We're going to put the ball. The ball's going in. Brian when you're right, Danny. Brian Fletcher looking for a shoehorn and Steve Lyons looking for a muzzle to keep Ben Kennedy quiet. Tahu up the blind side. Making all of 10 metres as the siren sounds in the background. And an expansive and high-scoring encounter, the opening 40 minutes here at Energy Australia Stadium. And the home side, the Newcastle Knights, lead 26 points to 18 at half-time. <laughs> Newcastle 26, South Sydney 18, and arguably one of the night's finest, this man, Ben Kennedy, in only his third appearance in season 2003, has been heavily involved in both aspects of the game, and what has been a pretty high-scoring encounter, five tries to three, and Josh Perry has had a fabulous 40 minutes. He certainly has scored a tremendous try, a solo effort, carried five players over the try line, nine hit-ups. He's going to have to substantially increase that in this second half because Matty Parsons has got a back injury. Looks like he'll take no further part in this match. And Paul Langmack, he cert certainly would have given them a spray at halftime. Shane Walker, first half, 12 tackles, good work right in defence. Only three hit-ups. That indicates that the, the, uh, the side, the Rabbitohs, tended to go wide wherever possible and didn't really ta take the Knights forwards on, which is understandable. Second half action, only eight the difference as Paul Stringer carts it up for his seventh hit up of the game to date. Carney, nice ball. Ashley Harrison tackled. 
Both coaches, I would assume, addressed defence reasonably heavily in their half-time speech and, and dominance around the ruck. No one team has really had the advantage in that aspect of the game. Now, at stages, the Knights really got a quick play of the ball going and, and caused all sorts of problems for the Rabbitohs, but it wasn't consistent through the 40 minutes. And overall, the defensive lapses from both sides were out wide. Both sets of forwards were reasonably tight in terms of uh, impen impenetrable with, uh, for the opposition, but it was out wide where the holes appeared. The Knights working it out and up towards halfway. Anthony Quinn, one of the try scorers, one of five try scorers for the Knights with the ball. Moves to the right hand side. Clint Newton. A certain level of impatience in attack, really, apart from South Sydney, who had successive sets at the Newcastle line in the opening minutes of the game. There really has been no sustained attacking pressure from either side. No, that's right. There's been a lot of a lot of errors, uh, a lot of penalties, and that's that's prevented the uh, the, the momentum from building. And it's it's been I wouldn't say a scrappy affair. It's been a, an interesting affair because of the number of breaks that have been made, but it's been played at no real high intensity. Wise Cataravata, now in jersey number 18 on screen at the moment. He wore jersey two in the opening half and had blood on the jersey, so they didn't have the reserve number two jersey sitting in the bag. Must have been left at Redfern, so he is wearing 18 for the remainder of this contest. Russo, nice ball to Harrison, hint of a forward ball to Smith. It goes back to the second rower. The Knights players screaming at the referee and the touch judge. This is the last, and a Willie Peters bomb has got plenty of pressure on Mark Hughes, and the only tackler there to be effective was his own teammate, Ben Kennedy. No, he wasn't, and you pushed off him. Mark Hughes hit in a very aggressive tackle by Ben Kennedy. And what a great take it was. The breeze is heavily behind the Rabbitohs in this second half. The ball was swirling around, and Mark Hughes stood his ground, took the, took the ball beautifully. The Bunnies will be looking to consolidate that territorial advantage in this final 40 minutes. Kennedy... Taken nicely by Harrison. Much smaller. Matt Parson, it has been revealed, will not be back for the Knights as Danny Baderas makes an uncharacteristic and fundamental error. Just his side of halfway. And as we saw the Knights with the perfect start in the opening 40 minutes, this could well be the perfect start for the Bunnies in the second 40. This side, feet of this side, Willie. Willie, bend easy, hold it, I'll tell you in the ball. Bend, bind, mate, bind. Hello. They look to the right-hand side through Craigie. One-on-one -on -one with Hughes, who missed him. The 5 8 tackle. Chris Walker, who has been better and busier at centre. Again, perhaps a little impatient. The Bunnies don't want to go forward. They want to go across field. Hooky who came very close to scoring a long-range try in the opening 40. Bajuri, the former West Tiger, tackled 22, 23, 24 metres out, a dominant tackle from the Knights. Carney at acting dummy half. First receiver is Peters. Over to Russo and Craigie, ball players everywhere. Chris Walker taken nicely to the ground by Tamana Tahu. That's been a good battle so far this afternoon. Back to Peters, Stringer, there's a man that'll go straight. They look to the left-hand side and again a possible overlap. Ahmed Bajuri steps inside one, outside the other. And Justin Smith dived at the line but forgot the ball. Again, attacking opportunities in that Knights defence opening up. And great footwork there by Armin Bajuri to get back inside his man, but oh, the pass was a little bit too low for, for Justin Smith. Another try gone begging. That's the third try that the Rabbitohs have, have all but scored, but the last pass has gone down on two occasions. Hold in. Lock in. South lock in. Make sure you get right in there, Matthew Gidley at first. 10 10 12 metres out. The Bunnies are going to want to get up and jam in. Ben Kennedy to Tamana Tahu out wide. A man with plenty of pace taken by the number 18, Kataravada. Craig Hall to Sean Rudder. 
the familiar figure at pivot for this Newcastle Knights outfit. Quigley at dummy half. Daniel Abraham. Again, easier metres than what Paul Langback would like to be affording the Newcastle Knights. Andrew Price has scored his first ever NRL try in the opening half. Wade McKinnon with the Knights pressuring him into submission some six metres out from his line. And they certainly come up in numbers and what they do is they jam their defensive line down here to really sting the Rabbitohs forwards as we can see. They'll try and force an error. Ben Kennedy crucial in this aspect of the Knights game. His controlled aggression and emotion close to the ruck is really infectious when it comes to getting up and jamming in the defence. Some good metres from Brian Fletcher carrying a couple of Knights with him. Chris Walker looking to expose a marker weakness and he has done just that taking in a nice covering tackle from Danny Baderas. You held on too long, hey Danny he tried to milk it but you still held on too long mate. Referee Steve Lyon will wake up there to the tricks that the players get up to. But Chris Walker, acceleration plus. There's a hole on the edge of the ruck. He said the market offence was no okay. good. And Walker capitalised on it straight away. Stringer. Another rabbit raid at the Newcastle line. Will this one be more effective? Fletcher plays the decoy. It goes to Smith. Runs across field and still makes four or five pretty easy metres. Tackled by Perry and quickly. Carney. Back on the inside to Lee Hookie, a beautiful ball to Brian Fletcher, and the captain's in. Fletcher's making an art form of this. Running off the smaller men and showing a certain agility and mobility front rowers aren't accustomed to. He loves the front row, but give this by credit Carney. He pops up, he hits, accelerates, pops the back ball back on the inside to Lee Hookie, and Fletcher was there, but Carney takes off, he sights a hole, and he does very, very well because he positions Lee Hookie to come back on the inside, and Fletcher was there. It was a great team try, and the right-hand side defence of the Knights is the, is the area of the field that's having all sorts of problems as well. It's the left side of the defence for the, uh, for the Rabbitohs, the right side for the for the Knights. And on that occasion, it was Carney. Good vision, got out of dummy half, off a good quick play, the ball, took off, popped the ball back on the inside, and then it went to Fletcher over the try line. Very animated, Paul Langnack on the sideline and a very clear indication. He yelled out to Willie Peters and pointed towards the Knights end of the ground. They want to play the football game down that end of the park, so don't be surprised to see a kick early in the tackle count to put the Knights once again back under pressure. Justin Smith, looking to get within two points of the Knights. And struck perfectly from the second rower. So the difference is down to four. We still have just over 30 minutes of action. Reggie, perhaps with a few words of advice, for the debutant coach Paul Langman. Passionate footballer. And having spoken to him regularly over the last couple of weeks, a very passionate coach. Just work with me, Dan. I'm not going to argue with you, mate. Underway again, and Paul Stringer fields the ball himself and throws what? himself back into the Newcastle line and good oh, metres oh. from the front rower. That's hit up number 11. McKinnon darting out from dummy half. Catavarada is there. He goes to the left hand side. Again, another easy eight metres. And a drop Don't ball. Don't try and play the ball too quick. Get to your feet. Willie Peters was a dummy half then, Junior, and looking to get the ball deep into Newcastle territory. Get to your feet. You're going to play the ball, fellas. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what sort of a breeze you've got at your back. If you can't get to your kick, it's wasted. And on that occasion, they were all set for a kick, as you said, Andy. They could have been 30, 40, 50 metres downfield, making the Knights come off their line. But uh, on the other side of the other side of the equation, they're under pressure now because of an error again. Craig Hall, speaking of errors, a very easy turnover in front of a crowd of just over 14,000 people here at Energy Australia Stadium. The hint of rain 
in the Newcastle area this afternoon. But again, the Knights supporters have come out en masse. The lights are on. Here at the venue, the Bunnies looking to hit the lead again. Bunnies just electing to perhaps catch a breather, get a few deep ones in and put the ball out. There was no real attacking opportunity for the wide men. It didn't seem like there was a lot of communication between the kicker and his outside backs. There was Jamie Russo there that put a little left footer in. He's working on the theory, I would imagine, that we'll get the ball down the other end of the field. We're making too many mistakes off it, up our end. Get it down the other end and let the Knights make the mistakes. Stay there, Owen. You're right there. Don't go anywhere. Ball's out. Ball's out. Gidley again. First up, expansive football to Tahu. He beats Wade McKinnon, beats another. And Tahu, the Newcastle Bulldozer, making easy, easy metres. And the Knights fans love every bit of it. Ben Kennedy. Ben Kennedy looking to get the right arm free. Two fabulous and inspirational Newcastle runs. Put to the ground, Jobson. Quigley a dummy half. Baderas. Rudder. Clint Newton too wide of the run. Looking to take advantage of the smaller men on the fringes. But Darius always dangerous. Five, leave him, Roy. Tackle number five. They go to Rudder. A cross field kick has caught Wade McKinnon off guard. An awkward bounce. And the South Sydney fullback forced to end play by bumping it over the dead in goal line. There's Matt Parsons back in the civvies. And I would suggest a very uncomfortable spectator. Yes, it was a great effort to get him out there on the paddock. They were down on troops, and he was out there, and a good save there by Wade McKinnon. He was out there on the paddock uh, under sufferance because they were short on numbers, but he went as long as he could, couldn't last the match out, and has at least got the Newcastle Knight, Knights going forward in the early stages of this game. Roll away, roll Another big off. opportunity. We saw this man, Josh Perry, muscle his way to points earlier in the game. He is brought down 21 metres out from the line. They search to the right. Jobson with ball in hand. Two. Test on the line. No gain in metres. This is tackle two. Again, they go to the right. Rudder. Nice ball to Gidley. Taken well by Lee Hookie. Newton again. He's had good numbers since coming on and has been effective, Clint Newton. Rudder to Baderas. Hughes. Tahu. A hint of a forward pass. In fact, more than a hint. The Knights cross the line, but it's been called back. No problem with that whatsoever. It was definitely forward. Great attacking raid there. Options and decoys out wide. Owen Craigie come out of the line, forced Tahu to make a quick catch and pass. And as a result of the pressure Owen Craigie put on Tahu, the pass was ineffective and forward. Catabarada. Balls out. On this occasion, so they've had... One, let's go. Plenty of Jordan locked forwards from the scrum base so far this afternoon of the Rabbits. McKinnon, too wide. Lee Hookey, Ahmed Bajuri, nowhere to go for the wing three quarter. Gidley and Quinn teaming well in defence. McKinnon has been busy in the opening minutes of the second half. Hit up number 11 for the fullback. Carney to Fletcher, the captain, has had an improved performance. In this game, Carney up the middle. The live wire halfback causing all sorts of problems for the Knights line. Tackle number five, Russo. A deep kick, Mark Hughes. Positioned perfectly the stand in fullback. One hands off. And Carney and the kicker himself, Russo, lead the chase team. And Carney's little little bust just then in the try a little earlier indicated the problems that the Knights have got in around that marker area. What's happening is they're slow to react in at the marker, marker area, and that's creating all sorts of problems either side of the ruck as Ben Kennedy comes up with another error. I thought there was a suggestion of a tackle a little high on Ben Kennedy too. Listen, listen. Right. You're going to stay, you're going to have a look at it. We don't need you to give him a serve, OK? Oh, in fact, it was the 
two bunnies coming together. Jamie Russo and Ashley Harrison. Or Ben Kennedy. Or collected one right around the buck. Yeah, let him have a look at it. All right, Chris Hemel, we've got to look at it upstairs. It's too high. Let's just get him down. All right. All right, we're gonna have, we'll have a look at it and put it on report, okay? It's just tight, let's get it down, okay? Oh. All right. Certainly not what the South Sydney Rabbits needed. Ashley Harrison placed on report for that tackle on Ben Kennedy. And what is a free replacement for the Newcastle Knights as Kennedy makes his way towards the sideline? It was a big hit because Kennedy dropped the ball because he was stunned as Andrew Johns looks on, wishing he could be out there. He'll be back out there again next week. But Ben Kennedy it stunned him so much he lost possession of the ball. It looked like he was nearly knocked out straight away immediately. Perry again. Good metres. Adaris. Rudder. Sean Rudder is exposed to gap. On to Matthew Gidley. The bunnies are there in numbers defensively. They will look to stretch it back to the right. Long ball from Baderas to Hughes. And Josh Parry running as a decoy on the inside. Blake Mueller filling the dummy half roll. Look to Perry who was unaware he was getting the ball. Baderas, Abraham. Seemingly without direction, the Knights. They lost the best part of 18 metres on that tackle. Baderas, up she goes, into the breeze. Nice take from Chris Walker. He has played plenty of fullback so far this year and needed to rely on every skill to defuse that situation. He did well, Chris Walker, and the Rabbitohs right across their back line on that occasion did well also. They were scrambling in defence. Tremendous break by Matt Gidley, but they were up in the faces of the Newcastle Knights and they, they, they thwarted any sort of attack at all. Tackle number four. The Knights' defence has been good this set. Paul Stringer. Billy Peters is the go-to man. He puts it on the left foot. Not the kick he would have liked to have executed. Mark Hughes fumbles at the back. Also there, Anthony Quinn. But the number one takes it back into the line. And the problem that the Rabbitohs faced on that occasion, they've done it a couple of times, is that they're kicking on tackle or on tackle five or the last tackle. And as a result, the Knights are set, ready to charge down. They're putting all sorts of pressure. Get the ball out of there quicker when the, when the Knights aren't expecting it and make the Knights come off their line. And use that strong breeze to your advantage. Craig Hall almost getting through the tackle of Owen Craigie. Sean Rudder spots a weakness out on the left-hand side. He gets it away to Tamana Tahu, who has been difficult to stop in the opening minutes of the second half. Baderas, a wide ball to Matthew Gidley, who breaks the tackle of Lee Hookie again. Gidley with a chip on the inside. It is a foot race, and Anthony Quinn has won the race. Again, it came from a defensive deficiency on the left-hand side for South Sydney. Lee Hookie falling off a tackle. And Anthony Quinn collecting the points. Yeah, the Knights go to their right-hand side. Matt Gidley's a, a, a handful at the best of times, but Lee Hookie's had his defensive problems in the last couple of weeks. Gidley gets free, sees space back on the inside, and a tremendous chase by Anthony Quinn. Comes up with the goods. Gidley, as I said, a handful at the best of times. Lee Hookie gets up on his face, doesn't drive with the legs. Gidley breaks the tackle, and what vision back on the inside. Manages to pop the ball back on the inside. Left foot, he's a right foot kicker normally, and tremendous try. Anthony Quinn, Quinn great backing up. We can just see here, that skill that, that Matt Gidley's got to get that ball, not only back on the inside, but off his left foot, outside of his left foot to get the ball back across on the inside. Shades of Andrew Johns, in fact, I wouldn't mind betting he's had some tips off Andy. Every chance, a double for Anthony Quinn this afternoon and a far easier kick for Daniel Abraham. The flags are up and the lead is extended. Michael Hagen, a little happier now perhaps than what he would have been some five minutes ago. And the gap is now out to six points. Willie Peters getting a rest from coach Paul Langmack. 
Both sides have been very cautious in using their interchange. Both coaches only halfway through that interchange program and there is only just on 20 minutes remaining. So there will, will be plenty of fresh legs as we head up towards the 80th and final minute. Six changes apiece, left for both. The Knights, very much a no-name, no-star power Knights outfit. Tradesman-like forward pack of laid the foundation today and Sean Rudder has taken control a little bit more of pivot in the second half. And a nice long kick down to Wade McKinnon, the South Sydney fullback who has been sound, if not spectacular Why today. It's still 20 minutes, or just under 20 minutes left in this match. Plenty of time for the Rabbitohs to win this match. Big breeze at their bats, there. and they've got to make sure they you use know. this breeze and use it often and early in the tackle count. Wise Katarabata again. Johnson, Mac, back up. Being warned about blood Mac from two. the nose and onto the jersey. They might need a Three couple more feet. jerseys and a few different yes, numbers to clean that problem up. Shane Walker back onto the field at the expense of Willie Peters. Tackle number four, they move inside Newcastle territory. Carney, look to be caught with the ball, he gets it to Luke Stewart, the former Cronulla Shark, that now calls Redfern home. Fletcher, forced to kick and kicks straight to Craig Hall. Again, perhaps a lack of communication between the ball players in the South Sydney side, but respectfully to Brian Fletcher, he's probably not the man you want to end up with the ball on the option play. No, there was definitely a lack of communication on that occasion. Carney, the halfback, and Craig, Owen Craig at 5 They've got to take control down in, in the attacking area and get some last tackle options going. On, with the breeze as strong as it is, get it in the air. It's causing all sorts of problems for Mark Hughes at the back. Get it up there as often as possible. Their options are down somewhat. The Boys, Bunnies at this point in time anyway. Willie Peters, Jamie Russo and Justin Smith. Three of the four men on the bench. An awkward bounce for the Knights. Not so for the Bunnies. Chris Walker ends up with the ball. And inside the 10 metres from his opposing number, Tamana Tahu. Could that be the reprieve the Bunnies are looking for? It could well be, but I tell you what, there's not much they could do there because when you give Chris Walker uh, a metre of space to move, he'll cut you up. So they, they probably figured we'll give the penalty away, even though the referee warned us, give the penalty away, it'll save a try at least. Duncan McGilvray taking the first hit up of the set. The second hit up of the set ends in disaster. The Knights back with the ball and with better field position than they have enjoyed on the opening tackles of their previous sets. Jobson has been on for the Knights in every game so far this season. And another knock on for the Knights as Ben Kennedy makes his way back onto the paddock. Another replacement player for the Newcastle Protestant Knights. That's number nine, Luke Quigley, sponsored by the NJC. Sponsored by the Ben Kennedy will certainly be a settling influence on this Newcastle outfit in the dying minutes. McKinnon, beautiful ball to Lee Hookey, who is looking to make amends for a dreadful miss on Matthew Gidley that led to the night's last try. Craigie, Walker, Fletcher, intercept ball. And again, the Bunnies early in the tackle count look for another way to give the Knights more points. They certainly do. They appear to be panicking. They don't realise that eight minute, eight points is, is, is not a small margin to bridge when you've got 15 minutes left on the clock. They've, they've given, away, given away possession the last couple of times on early in the tackle count without putting pressure on the, 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 kick, the uh, receive, kick receivers with a high ball in this breeze. The Knights. One would suggest one more try would all but secure the victory here in front of their home crowd. And Brett Carney 
restarts the tackle count but gets South Sydney out of a moment of bomber. Josh Perry. Hard and straight towards the post. That is tackle one. Vadaris. Inside ball to Abraham. Looks to hit and spin and offload. He couldn't find the support. Quigley. Vadaris. Switches the attack to the right-hand side to Sean Rudder. Who in turn loops a ball to Josh Perry. Brett Carney going in for the tackle and coming off second best on the big front rower. Carney down in back play. They go to Gidley on the short side. Shane Walker misses the first tackle. He's taken nicely. Eventually Gidley. Vadaris. This is tackle four. The Knights looking dangerous. Owen Craigie has kicked the ball to give Knight, the Knights six more opportunities of points. Well, on that... Chris, off the head, I called help out of it. Owen Craig, he had the ball there to grab Wayne and opted to try and lash the right boot out at it as we saw, see the offence for Chris Walker and the penalty. Yeah, Chris Walker trying to slow the play of the ball down there because the, the South defence wasn't set. As the Knights take a quick tap, go right side. Showing perhaps precious little respect for the South Sydney line. They want to sustain this pressure, the Newcastle Knights. They've had repeated sets at the line and they figure the Bunnies are going to crack eventually. Vadaris is on the left. Price runs as the decoy. Three men. Out to Ben Kennedy who looks on the inside, finds Mark Hughes. The Bunnies are scrambling well. They haven't enjoyed an even share of possession. Vadaris, an inside ball to Price, looking for number two for the afternoon and number two for the career. Tackle number four, Vadaris. Jobson drops the ball, and the Bunnies have again been let off, but have 90 metres between themselves and where they'd like to be. But give the Bunnies plenty of credit as well. What they're doing is they're getting up in the face of the Knights defenders and putting pressure on their ball players. Danny Badiris doesn't normally play halfback, as we've mentioned throughout the telecast, and he's being forced to make decisions, catch and pass decisions quickly because the Rabbitohs are getting up on him quickly. Tackle number three, Chris Walker. Walker, always dangerous, but Jury just held onto the ball. Tackle number four. Frank Pulatua charging up, lands right on halfway. A big kick, an important play. Lee Hookie bumps off one. A sloppy kick from the centre three quarter. Ben Kennedy will go back to field it. In fact, he allows Anthony Quinn to make that Craig Hall the opportunity. And Hall is looking to be bundled out into touch. Only his strength holding him in. Owen Craigie and Wise Catabadara. But once again, it was a poor last tackle option from the Rabbitohs. They should have put the ball up, decent kick to get through on it, or at least give themselves some chance of regaining possession. In instead of that, Lee Hookie puts a dreadful kick in, relieves the pressure, and the Knights now can clear the ball out. They look to the right to get out of danger. Anthony Quinn, pace to burn, beats one to Quinn. Eventually brought to the ground, 30 metres out from the try line. Vadaris. Went the blind side, had no support. Finds Abraham with an inside ball. Back to Baderas, who's becoming far more involved in steering this Newcastle ship around. Chris Walker came up out of the line, and South Sydney have paid the ultimate penalty. The Knights are in. Taman Atahu. Collecting a try and the gap is out to 12 and the clock is now working against the Bunnies. Yeah, the Knights, they went wide to the right-hand side. Hall does extremely well, gets pulled down in a tackle, but they got a quick play of the ball and then spread the ball back left-hand side. The Knights saw that the Rabbitohs were short on numbers. We had Wise Catavaria standing back near his own try line. I've got no idea what he was back there for. He should have been up in the line. It would have given them an extra defender. They would have been able to shut it down. But the Rabbitohs, they've been valiant. They've had an enormous amount of pressure they've had to absorb. But on this occasion, we see Catavaria standing back, puts pressure on, on, Craig, on, on Walker, Chris Walker, who had to go up and mark two defenders. And Tahu does 
very, very well with good footwork. Steps back on the inside and goes over for the try that, that makes it very, very tough now. 12 points with the conversion to come. Very tough for the Rabbitohs to come back from here. Number six for the season for Tamana Tahu, who I would think would have a pretty busy 10 days coming up with City Country Honours. And of course, a marquee match against the Roosters at Aussie Stadium next Sunday. Daniel Abraham adds the extras. And with 10 minutes to go, it is the Newcastle Knights 38, South Sydney 24. And it would seem a victory, another victory for the Knights. It's been a good spectacle for the fans in terms of of points scored. We've had 62 points scored in 70 minutes of play, so it's uh, it's certainly been plenty of action. Hasn't been the highest quality game, but plenty of action for the fans. And action of plenty for this man, Clint Newton. The second rower has beaten them all. Only dragged down from behind by Wade McKinnon as the floodgates begin to open. Gidley, a short chip, looking for his winger, Anthony Quinn. That's a hat trick. Again, opportunistic from the Knights. They knew they had the Bunnies defence scrambling. They came up with something that the Bunnies least expected. And it was off the back of a great back break by Clint Newton. He stuck the ball under his wing and just headed upfield. And what speed he's got for a, for a second rower. Wade McKinnon managed to bring him down. And then they spread the ball quickly right. Matt Gidley, as he does so often, sizes up the opposition, has a capacity to size the opposition up put the ball through and on this occasion we see Quinn coming through I have no problems with the put down downward pressure exerted by Quinn looked like it was from that angle we'll have a look at this angle not a problem at all so it'll be another four pointer but Matt Gidley was the architect he was the guy that saw the night scrambling and once again threw one of his little kicks put it through and I would expect the green sign to come up T.R.Y. It will be the first career hat-trick of Anthony Quinn. And what a way and what a day to do it. And the Knights fans will walk out of Energy Australia Stadium very satisfied with the result today. And this is the bus by, by Clint Newton here. Great speed. Sticks the ball under his wings. He's got visions of going all the way, but Wade McKin McKinnon says, no, nah, nah, we'll pull you up here. Gidley in position, sizes up the opposition, puts the ball through. And let me tell you, Anthony Quinn should be shouting Matt Gidley drinks for the next fortnight because the three tries that he's come up with have been wholly and solely the vision that Matt Gidley has, 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 uh, has, has well, he's sized up the situation, put the ball through to him and come up with the tries. Daniel Abraham, a personal haul of 14, and it will stay that way for this afternoon, but there is still just over eight minutes left as the Knights extend their lead. To think seven or eight minutes ago, the Bunnies were in this game. And unfortunately for Paul Langmack, their coach, who was doing it tough on the sideline, the dream of their second victory this season was a will again have to wait until next week. And one of the main reasons they've struggled, they haven't used the breeze at all in this second half. They've got a, a, a strong breeze at their back. They haven't used it to clear their own territory and they haven't used it or they haven't got last tackle options. They've, they've just uh, struggled to get rid of the ball on the last tackle. They've turned over, they've knocked on, they've put poor kicks in and that's taken the pressure right off the Knights. Clint Newton, the man responsible for the best part of that last try, very little difference in the offloads, but a massive difference in missed tackles. Almost double the amount of missed tackles for South Sydney, and that can be reflected almost perfectly in the scoreline. And most of those missed tackles, Andy, are out wide. That's where the Knights have carved up. The forwards, the South forwards, led by Brian Fletcher, have done a, a tremendous job to shut down the Knights forwards, but out wide, uh, they've just had too much firepower, the Knights. McKinnon taken nicely by Luke Quigley, still enthusiastic after some 73 minutes of footy. Paul Langmack making nine positional changes to the side 
beaten by the Raiders at Aussie Stadium last week. Where to for, from here for the debutante NRL coach? Lee Peters. A short ball. Finds Duncan McGilvray. Looking for some second phase footy. He gets it back. And they go to the left hand side, this time for Ashley Harrison. An inside ball to Jamie Smith. Justin Smith. 16 metres out. Craigie. Final tackle, this is. That's him. Ask him, Ben. He nodded his head. Why not back here? Giving a reprieve. Not the kick they would have liked, the Bunnies, but they get another set of six. Craigie looking to get round Ben Kennedy, who wrest wrestles the 5 well, eight to the deck. Just over five minutes remain. Peters back filling the halfback roll. The ball comes out of the ruck and finds him. A kick from Peters, a try to Carney. It's a case of whatever you can do, Knights, we can do. And it's great to see the, the Rabbitohs staying in the fight. They're not giving up. I mean, it's, there's not enough time left for them to win this football match, but at least they're not going to go down without a fight. And it was a great little kick in the end, but the, the pass out of the tackle by Duncan McGill, McGilvray was, was great, was tremendous. He gets his arms free, pops the ball back around the outside. Willie Peters sees this space out wide. He sees the nice defenders up in the face of the South Sydney attacking players. And I don't know what Brent, Brett Carney was doing out there, but he was uh, he was out on the wing, waiting for the opportunity, and was onside, chased the ball through, and came up with the four-pointer. So it was a good reward for Carney, because he's, he's had a tremendous match. Probably lacked a little bit in organisation, uh, but he's inexperienced. But there's, there's certainly plenty of enthusiasm, plenty of speed, and he's come up with his third try for the season. Brett Carney filling in out on the left wing because Ahmed Bajuri limped from the field just a couple of minutes ago. So Carney's versatility again on show. He's played uh, at six, at seven, at times at nine throughout the opening couple of rounds of NRL 2003 and this time finds himself on the wing. Justin Smith hooks it just a little bit too far. Four minutes remain and 14 points is the buffer, the advantage to the Newcastle Knights. Four minutes remaining here at the Newcastle Knights. South Sydney hierarchy looking on from the stands, Nick Pappas. Along with David Tapp, the chief executive offer. Tappy rubbing the head, it has been a pretty difficult season so far for the Rabbitohs administration and it continues to be difficult on the field. Still only the one win, and that was over the West Tigers at Aussie Stadium earlier this year. McGilvray. Frank Pulatua getting good service from Shane Walker at dummy half. Brian Fletcher's numbers, along with Ashley Harrison, really standing out in this beaten South Sydney outfit. And Josh Perry has been nothing short of sensational for the Newcastle Knights. Yet another penalty going in favour of Newcastle, and that penalty count really is starting to mount to alarming proportions. If you were Paul Langmack, it is 10-5. The penalties in favour of Newcastle. One oh, on the line. Oh, Bowen, let's go. Hold, hold, Frank, go. Baderis changes the point of the attack and heads back to Daniel Two. Abraham on the short Three. side. And I want to give Owen Craigie a wrap too. He's caught plenty of flack uh, over the course of this season, but I think he's had his best set game of the season today. He's defended well. He's uh, He's been up in the face of the Newcastle Knights oh. attackers. He's come here with a point That's to prove because... This was the club that he started his career at, Where won a competition here in 1997 as, as a 19-year-old. And I think he's played very, very well today. He's been the, one, of the, one of the South City backs that can really keep their head high. One of several. Chris Walker has been a lot busier and a lot more effective than he has in weeks past since returning from a broken arm as Baderis looks to find Ken Abraham, who knocks the ball on and really both sides with just under two minutes remaining really 
just going through the motions. The result is beyond doubt here at Energy Australia Stadium. And Andy, I suppose you say where to from here because South Sydney, one win so far in the competition. Last week they were a little hard done by with Cam, Cam, against Canberra. Uh, here today they were in it. They were in it up until about 15 minutes to go. What they really are lacking is they really are lacking some organisation. The main area that they've fallen down in, apart from giving away penalties and, and, and dropping some football, is their options. Their, their uh, options in terms of organisation on the last couple of tackles. They've given easy field position to the Knights on too many occasions. Mark Hughes has been good at the back. Newcastle Knights will retain their position in the NRL top six with a victory here. Matthew Gidley with the football. Some more second phase footy from the Newcastle Knights who are still not afraid to throw it around in the dying seconds. Rudder slammed to the ground by Ashley Harrison, by Shane Walker, the former Brisbane connection. Mark Hughes. And this pick up, good hands from Tamana Tahu, who has been wrestling with Chris Walker all afternoon. The point's fairly even. The victory, though, going to Tahu. Abraham on the blind. This is the final play. Up she goes from Danny Baderas. Quinn looking for a fourth. Kennedy flies high. Quinn ends up over the line, but the referee has called a knock on. And that is the way it will end here. In front of an appreciative crowd. They have seen their notes get... Back in the winner's circle. And a reasonably high-paced game. All 34 players quick to end at the Newcastle Knights 42, South Sydney 28. This has been a Fox Sports production for the National Rugby League Partnership.